class. My name is Hannah Colley, um, and I chose to present on week 10 on Jason. And if you're anything like me, you have no idea, well, had no idea what this is. But I hope to be able to inform y'all as much as I've been informed as I've studied what Jason is. So what is Jason? This right here is the logo that they use for Jason. Um, JSON is a lightweight data interchange format. It's based on JavaScript objects, and it stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Um, so basically, it's used to send data back and forth to a server as text. It has little by little made its way into the industry and is somewhat replacing XML, which we'll talk about in further slides. Um, in fact, Ajax is using it more and more than XML, which is ironic because Ajax name partially is derived from XML. Um, but it's it, JSON is very easy to read um, and write, and it's also easy for machines to parse and generate. Um, and so it can be easily translated into JavaScript because it is made of JavaScript objects. So. What are the data types that can be used with JSON? Um, the first one is number. There, um, just like JavaScript, there's no difference between an integer and a float. Um, so if you use a numeric, um, make sure to put no quotes around it. Um, and otherwise it's looked at differently. Um, a string. So there's a string. Um, these are strings of Unicode characters, um, and they must be wrapped in double quotes. That is the essential here. Um, they, uh, JSON also supports booleans, which are true and false, so just like JavaScript. Um, arrays, ordered list of zero or more values. Um, arrays are always wrapped in square brackets, um, so just like any other programming language that you're used to. Um, and JSON is all supportive of objects. You can embed child objects and multi-tiered objects in JSON. Um, I'll show you how to embed a child object um, on an example later. Um, and it supports null, which is an empty value. Um, the data types that are not supported um, are functions, dates, and undefined. So the rules for JSON are as follows. Um, JSON works by using key value pairs. So if you'll notice right here, name is the key and value um, is Hannah. Sorry, I might have said that a little mixed up. But if you want to make sure um, to put these double quotes, there's a colon in between the two, and they are wrapped in curly brackets. Um, so we talked about that. I have to use double quotes. Um, they must be specified data types, um, so use the .json extension, and the MIME type is application um, slash JSON. These are just examples, some visual examples of what an object would look like. So you got the curly brackets, the string, the colon, um, this is the quote, so you know, it looks more like a comma, and then the value, and then an end in a curly bracket. And same with a typical array. Um, square brackets and value and put that in quotes as well. Um, here's anything that can be in the value. So we talked about these, a string, a number, an object array, a boolean, or a null. Um, and then here's a very complicated picture of what a string would look like. Um, and also extremely complicated picture of what a number would look like. It is really not that complicated. So let's give you an example. Um, so we have a single um, JSON object for a person, which is me. <laughs> um, so name is the key, and Hannah Colley is the value. And notice that it's wrapped, well, you'll see the like, other curly bracket at the end, um, but it starts with a curly bracket, um, and everything's in double quotes, except for this numeric right here. Um, and then here is how you would embed an object. So, same um, double quotes, 
start another curly bracket, add your keys and your values, and then end it with a, another curly bracket and comma, and finally end the whole JSON in another curly bracket. Um, and so that's how you embed the object. Um, this is obviously not my real address. I would not put that on there. Um, so, uh, JSON's extremely easy to, to parse. Um, a common use of JSON is exchanging data to and from a web server. Um, so when you're receiving data from a web server, the data is always a string, um, and you'll, you'll parse the data with json.parse, um, and then the data becomes JavaScript object. And I'll show you an example on the next slide. So this is um, this is what XML looks like versus JSON, and you can tell how complicated <laughs> this is to look at right here. Everything looks the same. Um, and so this is just so much more beautifully laid out. There's more space. You can easily tell what the key and the values are. Um, and so here are some similarities. They're both self-describing. Um, in other words, uh, they're readable by humans. <laughs> um, they both are hierarch hierarchical. I can't say that very well. Um, but there's values within values located in both. Um, they can be parsed, and they're both used a lot with multiple programming languages. And they can be easily fetched. Um, let's see. But JSON does not use the end tag. Um, it's quicker to read and write, um, and it can use arrays as well. Um, and the biggest difference is that XML has to be parsed with XML parser, um, but JSON can be parsed by a standard JavaScript function. And I don't know why that one just showed up, but JSON's shorter. Okay, so I told y'all I was going to teach you how to parse it, and it's very, very easy. Um, honestly, this right here, this parse should be a lowercase, but I'll show you in the example. But the, the header automatically capitalized everything. Okay, so you have your JSON script right here. Um, so let's say, imagine that you received this text right here from a web server. Um, and you've got your keys and your values and your keys and your values and your keys and your values. <laughs> um, all wrapped in curly brackets and double quotes. And you want to put it into JavaScript. Um, sorry, you want to parse it. I'll show you how to put it in JavaScript next. Um, how to script it is what I meant to say, sorry. Getting confused on my words here. Um, so you just write var object equals json dot parse in lowercase, and then all in parentheses, you would copy and paste this entire text. So it's super easy to parse it. Um, and then end it with a semicolon. Uh, make sure the text is written in JSON format or else you will have syntax errors. So that's pretty typical of most languages. Uh, so here's how you script it. It's pretty basic, just how we've been doing everything with the, add your paragraph and then you call the script and your script tags, document dot get element by ID. So nothing changes here. Demo and HTML. And then right here, you're going to put object, dot, and then the key name, so you'll call it. Um, and this right here, this quotation and comma, just separates the object name and the object age um, when they appear on your screen. So, all in all, why would we use JSON when we have so many other text formats for our scripts. Well, um, it's parsed into a ready-to-use JavaScript object, so you've seen how easy it is to make it back into JavaScript because that's basically what it derives from. Um, it's extremely compact and fast, and so you can add a lot of information um, into a little spot, and it's extremely ideal for transferring data. And it maps nearly perfectly with almost every programming language, so what you're already using 
will work with Jason. Um, I hope that you've been able to understand Jason a little bit more. Um, and feel free to ask any questions on the board and I will do my best to answer them. And if I cannot answer them, I will figure out where to find the answers to them. But thanks for paying attention and y'all have a great week.